introduce what we're going to talk about today. It's going to be about um, really improving the way that we capture drilling information. Um, and this is going to be through the usage of digital tools. What we're going to cover is just first a little bit of uh, background. So um, background on Strayos, who we are, what we do, uh, background on uh, kind of the problem area. And so what is digitalization um, at a broad level and why is it important? Um, then we're going to zoom in to the drill log use case. So um, how does digitalization of drill logs actually create value? And then we're going to go into um, the, the demo, the live demo of the Stratus Fielder app um, that we're launching this week. And we're going to also cover off um, a little bit of best practice for implementing new uh, digital drill logging uh, on site. Awesome. So to get started just with, with Strayos, who we are. So uh, Strayos is essentially a mine to mill AI platform. So uh, we have a software platform um, that is cloud-based and has a whole heap of tools starting from that design end um, where you can do surveying, you can do uh, drill and blast type design, um, pit design, things like this. Um, you can then use AI to make predictions based on those designs and based on that, uh, that 3D and visual data that gets collected. Uh, and then you can fly drones, you can import other sensor data, uh, all sorts of things, pull it into the platform in order to then assess outcomes. So things like fragmentation, um, muck pile movement, are also things in outside of the drill and blast world. So um, doing inventory uh, management, uh, automated whole road assessments, uh, things like this. And then finally, we kind of tie all these different uh, data sources together into optimization. So because we have all of the contextual data uh, from the, uh, say, 3D models, uh, from visual drone data, from the designs, um, from other AI algorithms that are trained just to pick up um, geology, things like this, we have that data. Um, we then predict outcomes. We assess what the actual outcomes were and it creates a feedback loop where we can start to optimize uh, and report on trends over time. So that's essentially uh, what Strayos does. Um, if you want more information, feel free to reach out. Um, and I guess what we're talking about today is, uh, is a, it's data input. So it comes into this design stream down here. So at a high level, what is digitalization? Uh, so we've got a few examples of what it's not, first of all. So um, people sometimes think of digitalization as uh, just storing everything. So it's almost just record keeping. So we've just got to get all of these things that we're doing on paper and just put them into, uh, into a computer somewhere in a Dropbox folder or something like that. That's not really what we're talking about here today. Um, when it comes to uh, another option, another thing that people sometimes think it is of manual data entry, it's kind of keeping the same type of, uh, a lot of the same work um, required, um, but just doing it in a digital tool. That's getting closer to what we're talking about because it's at least having structured data as opposed to just you know, scans of data, uh, of, of kind of unstructured data. Um, but it's, it's still not quite getting it at, um, at the heart of what we mean. Uh, what we mean is actually uh, streamlining processes and actually focusing on value. So working out how we can uh, create efficiencies through uh, you know, having data in a digital format um, and then actually using that to, uh, to you know, reduce costs or increase revenue for, um, for sites. Now, digitalization overall is something that uh, we, we've been talking about in these webinars for quite a while, and we've been doing surveys. Um, and so we thought it'd be, it'd be uh, interesting just to, to throw up some of those results we've had in the past. So um, overall, our, 
we see a fair bit of room for for improvement i guess overall is the is the general message so uh a lot of the time uh drill plan design work uh is still only done either on paper or not at all so uh only 18 percent of the of, of our survey respondents said that they're doing digital drill design for every shot so a lot of the a lot of even just the, even the design work is done uh all on paper um in terms of information that uh blasters have before they get to site a lot of the time it is just a visual inspection of the face so drill logs only featured 25% of the time, and this is the most as the most detailed view. 45% of the time, uh, people didn't even have that. Um, and then finally, how much is AI actually being used? Not very much by many people. Essentially, is the is the uh, is the answer for that one. So a lot of room for improvement, especially around this digital drilling information. So when we kind of look at the broader view of drilling and blasting and where we are today and where we might be uh, in the future where we should be aiming for we see that we are uh, a lot of time playing in this drill and blast 1.0 uh, up to some sometimes uh, in the drill and blast 3.0 world um, across these three different dimensions so going into the design world first uh, we have you know the 1.0 world looking like layouts done with tapes uh, the planning's not not really done. Moving into the 2.0 world is when we start getting digital shot designs done. Um, looking at the at the reporting streams to jump down the bottom um, to kind of tie this in with the with drill logs is a lot of the time the data that's being collected is client compliance reporting only. So we might have a drill log, but it's it's really just there. Um, for compliance purposes. Only when we move into this 2.0 world, we're starting to get some manual charts being made, which may include some of the data uh, captured from the drill logs if it's digitized, um, but potentially not. Um, and, there's, and this is only the 1.0 and 2.0 world um, that we're kind of playing in, uh, in, in those examples, I guess. Overall, to get to this drill and blast 4.0 world, where we start to have a lot more uh, AI uh, optimization and automation work in mining uh, and drilling and blasting processes. We're going to need a lot of this data to digitize. This is a fundamental um, in order to in order to actually improve things. We need to know um, what we've done in the past. We need to be able to make correlations. So this is kind of why it's so important. Uh, data is really fundamental for getting us to that drill and blast 4.0 world. And then the good thing is that the tools and technology do already exist to get us there. I mean, we've got a few examples up here. There are loads more, um, but drones, LIDAR sensors, uh, lasers, everything from a you know, hyperspectral coming out now as well. There's a lot more tools in our, in our arsenal for actually capturing data. Um, uh, in order to to inform the decision making in drilling and blasting, um, and the trick it, it tends to be nowadays structuring it, putting it all together, connecting it to each other, and that's where some of this data management and analytics technology comes into play. So, uh, having a central kind of cloud platform that everything can connect to, that knows it has some intelligence around it, it has some structure to it that can. Uh, that can be used to kind of interpret mining specific uh, data in a meaningful way um, as opposed to just you know seeing it as a whole bunch of, of text or numbers and things like that. So that's a bit of background just on digitization and, and kind of the opportunity that exists um, but what we're really here to talk to now is how this works for digital uh, drill logs in particular. So um, to kind of get started on the on the problem statement specifically with, with digital drill logs, it's that we know that rich and accurate drilling data is critical uh, for getting optimal blast outcomes and a whole range of other things uh, in terms of just operational performance improvement, safety, compliance, all these kinds of things. Um, 
depend on having good drilling data. Um, and so it's kind of, it's almost crazy to think how much of it happens on paper today. Um, and it's, you know, it's not necessarily that it's done in a bad way and the data that's captured is wrong or anything. It's just that the format uh, being on paper means that it's just a lot harder to then uh, turn into something valuable. So because things are written on paper, drillers, blasters, and managers, none of these stakeholders can use the data effectively. So one part of that is not being able to identify trends that require to optimize blasting. So not being able to see things like, uh, you know, has this, uh, ha has the ground started to become, you know, more weak in this area or we've been getting more water over time? Um, is there, is there some, uh, some kind of link we can make between the elevations of all of these cavities or where the drill's losing air, things like this. Um, finding those trends is a lot harder when everything's on paper, especially when you're trying to find trends over multiple shots. Um, and the next thing is you can't build reports to manage performance, particularly operational performance. So how do you know exactly where your uh, drill is more efficient this month than last month? How do you know, um, uh, you know, the difference, you know, where between different operators is someone better at using one drill than another person is? Um, how do you know uh, if uh, the average, even, even just things to do with uh, penetration rates, how do you know if um, it, maybe it's not just the, the driller or the drill, it's the rock conditions as well, um, if, if something is, is different? Um, uh, between different conditions, it's hard to tell. It's hard to tell what the real cause of that is unless you have the data. And then finally, the last thing is um, you can't easily audit all of your data. So if you just have a whole stack of pieces of paper, uh, it is uh, just generally a lot harder uh, to to kind of maintain that record ensure that you have everything and that you find it easily when you need to so in the case that there are any issues you can uh, you know that you are you're covered so all of these things um, are kind of they're just uh, they're just inherent kind of limitations of, of doing drill logs on paper so what is the alternative um, the alternative is capturing this in digital form. So in a, a digital field tools, essentially to enable capture as well as analysis, as well as reporting of drill log data. And this is something that um, people are, are trying to do um, and people are, are trying to, to pull together. And this is something that uh, definitely offers a lot of value, even if you know, even from the, the most basic implementation of this is something like um, Excel tables uh, on, a, on a tablet or something like that. Um, but what we've tried to do now is build it into an actual fit for purpose streamlined application. So use cases of digital drill log apps. These are almost more like value propositions really. So how you can create value out of these, uh, out of having digital drill logs. So number one is increasing operational efficiency. So as, as someone who manages a fleet of drills or a, you know, a, a blasting, uh, drilling and blasting company or a mine, um, managing, uh, owning a whole fleet of drills or potentially uh, having a, a set of uh, set of contractor drills or something come in as well. Any of these use cases, uh, are, any of these use cases, maximizing operational efficiency of your drills is important and is enabled by having better visibility over what those drills are doing and how they're doing it. Uh, and being able to, to view that data, not just, um, you know, at a point in time or by going and pulling a piece of paper out of a folder, 
um, but by being able to quickly log in and see everything over time that's been happening for a particular asset. So uh, as the example, um, you could have drillers uh, logging the timestamps and other information for each hole as they're, as, they're, um, as they're drilling the holes and having the system create automated reports. And then from that, the ma manager is being able to see real-time progress updates. So uh, for one, being able to improve planning and scheduling uh, is a big thing. So knowing, all right, um, we were supposed to be drilled three quarters of this shot by now, but we're actually halfway through. So drilling is progressing a lot more slowly than we expected. Therefore, we have to make other scheduling decisions uh, around the fact that this drilling is not going to be completed. Maybe we have to shoot somewhere else first or something like that. So that can save a lot of money for sites um, uh, by avoiding kind of those, those bad scheduling situations by uh, figuring, out, figuring them out ahead of time. Secondly, um, we've got managers being able to review automatic reports on performance and utilization. So we touched on this a little bit earlier, but knowing how, uh, how that drill has, has been operated on each day, on each shot, on each you know, type of rock, um, by each operator, being able to have all the data and then cut it in those different ways uh, is what really allows us to uh, to understand where we need to focus um, for improving performance. So, if the answer is this drill is uh, if, if it is related to an operator, it's like can we help this operator um, perform better? Or if it's uh, if it's this drill is not performing well in a certain rock type, when we have other you know other other versions of the same drill who are performing better. Uh, is there something mechanical that we need to address? So then finally, um, in this output section, we have blasters knowing in advance about issues and being able to plan accordingly. So from an operational perspective, I guess the easiest one to think about is, um, is, is water. So if, if we have that information in advance and it's, it's transparent and available, you know, a blaster can log in straight away and see uh, in real time uh, how much water is in a shot. Then drillers uh, that the drillers are uploading, then blasters can make better decisions about uh, which products they're going to need to bring um, to that shot. So from all of these different outputs, the result are, uh, are kind of obvious that you're going to get better asset utilization. You're going to get better productivity out of your out of your drills, out of your people, and when it comes to blasting, you have less delays. You're going to have potentially better results as well. So this is, these are all things that help increase operational efficiencies um, by having this digital uh, uh, data. The second thing that uh, having digitized drill logs can help with is preventing safety incidents. So if obviously drillers are entering information on things like cavities and soft seams and uh, areas where the drill might be losing air, then it enables blasters to have really clear view of where they need to potentially adjust loading, for example. So it can stem through areas of weak rock or air deck um, around cavities, um, just re-drill holes altogether if necessary. Um, so it can, it can really avoid those situations where we come up against something unknown and and that prompt, uh, that causes uh, like a fly rocking incident or an air blast incident. Um, and, and I guess the other, the other result uh, up there to mention is that the better containment of energy is going to lead to better performance as well. So it's not just reducing uh, uh, the potential for safety incidents, but generally when you are, you know, containing containing the energy better, you're going to get better results. So the next one, while we're talking about better results, um, is is really just all about that. So um, by uh, by kind of knowing, for example, 
um, timestamps when drillers are actually drilling each hole. You can get a view of penetration rate, even if it's just average penetration rate over the hole. You can still that, have that per hole. And also, as the driller is entering other information about that hole, um, other uh, comments, other uh, features, things like that, um, that can allow uh, blasters to then tailor uh, blast loading to that hole, uh, to those specific hole conditions. So, uh, for example, using just overall penetration rates to match explosive selection to rock hardness, being able to identify if one uh, half of the shot, for example, um, was much harder than the other half of the shot, and then make a, a loading decision accordingly. Um, organizing redrills to avoid areas where uh, you're potentially going to get really poor fragmentation if uh, you know, a hole is really short, it's caved in or something like that. Um, and also being able to organize backfilling properly if that's required as well. Um, and I guess, uh, you know, you can also add to that list any of the things that we, we had in the slide before around, um, you know, if there's cavities, uh, making sure that we're either, you know, potentially air decking, stemming through them. Um, maybe it's about using packaged product in some areas, uh, if we have a lot of broken ground, things like this. Uh, any of that information can prove the blast results. So we're going to end up with better fragmentation. We're going to end up with better throw and, um, and definitely going to end up with better floors, especially if we're able to know ahead of time um, when we, uh, where we want to organize redrills. Uh, and that's a decision that we can make while the drill is still on the shot um, because that data is coming in real time. And so the fourth thing uh, that this can help with is managing compliance. Uh, it's another one we, we touched on before, um, but if you have an app where all of the information is all synced to a central uh, cloud platform, um, whenever, the, whenever the, the phone gets connectivity or the, um, uh, the tablet gets connectivity, uh, you know that then all of that data is securely stored forever. Um, you're not going to lose that piece of paper. Uh, nothing can... Uh, nothing can happen if there is any um, any issue in the future. You are completely covered because it's all there in, in one place. Um, if you then need to do some kind of uh, audit, you can share all of that information really easily. Uh, it doesn't have to be someone coming to your office to uh, to pick up the box of papers. It can just be a, a link that gets sent if need be. Uh, and it also gives you the ability to uh, to just generate generate standard. Hey, Brad, uh, mm -hmm. sorry to interrupt here. I think uh, you may need to switch your camera. Uh, sorry, the uh, as a guest, everybody is only seeing the slides as a small part, and your video as a big. Oh, sorry. I yeah. had no idea. It looks on mine like like my face is small and everything else is big. Um, is there a, has that made it better? Yeah, I think it definitely came as a full screen, but I think as a, as a presenter myself, I can't really uh, tell what the guest experience is. So I think that everybody nice. seems it's yeah. better now. Yeah. Ah, okay. oh, sorry guys. I couldn't, yeah, I couldn't see the comments before. So, um, let me, uh, I'll give you a quick, uh, a quick run back through these, just think just so that if, you know, if anyone wants to screen or anything to look at later, they can, um, but um, so this was our slide on uh, Strayos overview. So from that design, predict, assess, optimize um, with all of our tools there, all of our prediction, AI algorithms, assessment algorithms, and then that optimization tying it all together. 
this is our what digitalization is not and what it is. Uh, these are those uh, results of the survey questions that we had. So uh, a lot of the uh, drill plan design work being, uh, you know, only done for special projects or never at all. Uh, and most of the 45% uh, of the time, uh, people not even having drill logs when they come to the blast. This is the uh, slide on that drill and blast 1.0 world up to drill and blast 4.0 world, what that looks like across a few different dimensions and how everything is really dependent on gathering and connecting data to get to that, uh, to enable that uh, 4.0 world. Uh, this is our slide showing a few of the, uh, the tools around for, for field data collection, as well as in the analysis of that data. Um, so this was just our uh, intro slide to the problem statement. And uh, I talked through pretty much all of this, just around uh, the issues with handwritten drill logs. And so then the solution being uh, digital field tools for capturing, analyzing and reporting on the, uh, the drill data. And um, and then here are our, our four use cases that we're in now. So the first one being increasing the operational efficiency. Uh, the second one being preventing safety incidents. And the third being improving blast results there. I'm not going too quick in case anyone wants. We can, we can send that afterwards anyway as well. Uh, and the fourth one, which we're on now, being managing compliance. So uh, making sure that um, uh, uh, I think uh, we're kind of at the, at the end of this, that um, everything's kind of stored forever. It's easy to share if it needs to be shared, and it's easy to query for, for generating reports. Uh, and so what it does is it saves just a lot of manual reporting work and it, uh, it saves time in that in that audit uh, and reduces uh, overall liability in the case that there is an incident because you have that that you always have the record of what happened. There's no chance that you've um, that you have lost something that you need. So the next things, uh, the next two things we're going to talk about is then. All right, so it sounds great. We need to have a uh, digital drill log tool. Uh, how do we actually go about implementing that? Because, uh, I mean, the first thing that comes to everyone's mind is change is difficult. Um, change is, uh, people don't like it on site. There's a lot of different stakeholders involved. So what is the, what are the best practices here? So first, uh, I guess we have a, a kind of a step-by-step -step process that we've seen work in the past. Um, where number one, you need to be engaging people ahead of the trial and the people are, are really all the stakeholders involved, but particularly operators. Um, and you have, to, you have to find firstly operators that um, are already uh, you know, on the way to being bought in. So people who are able to act as champions. Um, and then you have to work with them and engage them, um, bring them on the journey, ask them for input, um, to make sure uh, that they are um, fully bought in. Next, you've got to pilot the system in parallel with the existing system. So you don't just want to make a quick sudden switch to a new system ever. You need to do, even though it does you know, feel like a little bit of extra work for a short amount of time, um, you want to do this at a you know, subset of the operations um, for a small length of time just making sure that everything works the way it should, um, to iron out any process issues, any technical issues, anything like that um, ahead of uh, a large rollout. And based on that pilot, you need to create a very uh, structured, standardized uh, operating procedure um, so that it's easy to then roll out to everyone and everyone ends up using it in the same way. Um, I think with th especially things like apps these days, um, we all have a, a bit of a tendency to, uh, to, 
to use them slightly differently. Um, but you have to make sure from a process perspective that everything is controlled. So uh, it is worth putting the extra rigor behind, uh, behind procedures, um, even when using an app um, like this. The fourth thing is in providing training to all operators ahead of the, of the rollout. So it's taking those SOPs and uh, putting that into training materials engaging everyone um, and uh, and making sure everyone fully understands what they're what's expected of them um, before they have to actually use it um, because the last thing you want is someone uh, getting confused frustrated and then and then uh, and then getting a lot of pushback from them because of that um, the fifth thing is obviously launching um, but it obviously doesn't stop there. Uh, there's continual engagement and feedback required. Uh, and yeah, from not just operators, but every, all stakeholders, managers, compliance officers, anyone who's involved uh, in, this, in, this, um, uh, in this process and with this data. So some of the key lessons that we have learned in the past around this. Um, um, a few, uh, the first key thing is embedding it across functions to ensure adoption. So not, not just rolling it out to uh, operators, for example, but, and, uh, and not involving managers or not just uh, rolling it out, uh, you're training managers on it and expecting uh, the operators to be able to use it. Likewise, it's making sure that it's also being used um, effectively by the compliance officers as well. Um, so, that, so that the people who are actually receiving a lot of this data uh, are also uh, fully across how to use it and are also benefiting from it and are bought into it as well. The next thing is setting up uh, standard training processes for new people. So making sure it's really about ensuring that there's a culture where as soon as new people start, uh, they know that this is how things are done and that they uh, come in uh, to an environment where everyone else around them is using this and it's just a, it, it's, it's kind of a quick and simple thing to learn. You don't want someone new coming in and, and having a, you know, a paper process for the first month while they learn this um, because it creates that atmosphere that, uh, that it's not really expected and that there are all these ways around it and that it's a, an extra burden. So it's making sure that you have that, um, that, digital culture within the organization. The last thing is, uh, as we mentioned in the last one, continuing to engage people um, uh, for feedback, especially around usability. So um, making sure that people, uh, it, it's not just a, a kind of a, an unstructured thing, but having regular check-ins to gather feedback. Um, it's about having uh, kind of anonymous channels and things as well, and about being in constant collaboration with whatever tech partner you're working with to to make sure that anything that is being suggested is actually being taken seriously and able to be developed and and, uh, and built into the uh, application. Great. So without any further ado, uh, let me introduce Streos Fielder the new uh, mobile app that we've just launched for uh, digital drill logs. So the, uh, the four key uh, bits of information uh, to, to get across about this are that, firstly, it allows you to capture rich data, um, but through very streamlined, easy to use interfaces. This is one of the most important things we found from research that, that people needed. Um, were things like guided workflows. So you don't want to have a, a screen with 50 buttons on it. We want to know, we want to be doing one thing at a time and be taken through a set of steps. So um, it's easy for people just to pick up and know what they have to do. Simple layout, big buttons, uh, instructions in plain English, things like this. Um, but then also the ability to capture really rich data of things like photos for each hole. Uh, start and finish times of each uh, of each hole, things like that. 
Secondly, uh, the ability to create instant reports based on the on the data. So on one side, we have things like monthly drill, drill reports. So a report for each drill um, with information on things like what was the, uh, the total length drilled, um, what's the average time per hole, what was the utilization rate, um, how much uh, what was the average time between holes as well. All these bits of data that you can, uh, you can capture once you have this all digitalized. Uh, and then secondly, actually having things on per shot level. So this is, I guess, your traditional drill logs, um, drill log report. So having that map, having that table view of all of the holes, and then having the ability to instantly share any of that information over email um, through PDF reports straight from the app. Uh, the next thing is uh, the ability to use it on any shot. So making it really flexible to something that we, we heard was really important. So sometimes people want to, uh, want to use it with, a, with a, a shot that they've already designed in the web app. So they might have a, a, a drill pattern already that they've designed on a computer and want to um, send that straight to the app. Um, in that case, uh, the, the design length and angle of a hole is already there so that the operator knows when they go to drill that hole exactly what uh, they need to drill it to uh, and in that case uh, we want to have all of that you know design versus actual information stored but sometimes it might not be you know that digital drill design done so it has to work without a map uh, without a digital map uh, and uh, and have the potential to just have uh, say a photo upload of the uh, of the shot plan if that's still being done by hand and then there's also an option in between those where uh, they actually create a digital design on the device itself so being flexible with kind of all of those three different options um, for creating a, a drill pattern uh, is something that we've um, is that we've, we've really uh, designed the app around And then uh, lastly, collaborating with others uh, in the field and the office. So having this data all, uh, all basically, firstly, all of the drill logs for all the different sites, all the different shots at each site, all in one place so that you can access it all from anywhere. And there's only one version of the truth ever. Uh, having a real-time view of progress. So having things, uh, if, if, say, the phone has connectivity, just be syncing with the um, with the cloud while that happens um, so that someone else uh, anywhere they are can log in and see exactly the, uh, the progress of the shot. Uh, and also being able to have multiple drills on the same shot, uh, know exactly what each other have done. Um, that being said, it also has to still work without internet. So that was something that uh, a big design decision that we made was making sure that it all can be saved locally and then just synchronize with the cloud when it gets reconnected. So these are all the kind of the key design uh, features that we wanted to, to build into this gathered from, from research with, um, uh, with our users and with, and with other people in the field. Um, so uh, from all of this, um, what I was keen to do next is actually show you a live demo of the app um, so if you give me one second to stop sharing this screen and I'll start sharing another screen. Now this is a, uh, first time using this, uh, this system. So let's see how it goes. All right, I can see it on my screen now. Let me share and see if I can get you that same window. Yeah, we can see. Uh, the mobile screen, Brad. Yeah. 
Looks like Brad probably dropped here. <laughs> All right, <laughs> there is never a good webinar if there is no technical glitch, right? So uh, we'll see uh, if Brad hops in. What we what he's trying to do is his um, trying to do the demo on the phone, but show you guys the screen on the computer, and that's where things are getting a little wonky now. So we'll be right back. Sit tight. Yeah. Any? There you go. I'm no, back. We're back. <laughs> Uh, but the phone know, screen is lost now. Yeah, 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 yeah. Let me all right, I'll try again. Let's bring the phone screen up and see if it kills my microphone again. <laughs> all right. Screen my screen. Now I'll share that one. Yeah, I think uh, the audio is not working out, Brad, as soon as you're connecting to the phone screen. You, you might just want to hold your phone and uh, use that <laughs> uh, to showcase here uh, in the interest of time. So what I can, what I can do, Ravi, I can even just show a few uh, things with the screen, with the with the phone, and you can you can commentate to them if you uh, if you'd like. Yeah, that that would work. I'll do it through because I can hear you while I'm doing it. So. Yeah. Um, let me just do that, and I'll just go through. I'll go through a workflow where um, I'm just going to set it up first of all. So set up a like a new shot. Um, with no uh, no map uh, to start with, and um, we'll add some holes and show you what you can add in those holes, um, and how you would drill a hole. So basically, you would you'd come in um, and uh, when you go to drill the first hole, you'd tap start drilling. When you finish drilling the hole, you tap finish drilling. Uh, it logs the timestamps, and then you can add information to the hole. Uh, and then we'll go through um, creating a, a, a that digital shot plan as well. Perfect. Cool. All right, let's load this one back up again. All 
I have to say, everybody, thanks for your patience here while we figure this out. This is a new thing that like demoing the mobile app to computer screen is something we are doing for the first time. <laughs> <laughs> oh, your audio is still here. Oh, no way. It's actually working this time. Okay, well, there you go. <laughs> well, that's been easier. So yeah. I guess you can, you can, uh, you can select it all from the, uh, you can select from your list of sites as you just saw. You can create a new one or just go into an existing site. And then within each site, you have all your projects. So I'm just going to create a new one, call it test project seven, just so I haven't used that before. And then here's, if you remember before, I was talking about the ability to use it in, in, a, in a few different ways. So creating a new project, I can do it with a digital shot plan map. I can upload a photo of my map, or I can just use no map to get started really easily um, and quickly. So in this case, I got no map, come through this screen. And uh, so say I'm in the drill on the shot, I just create the, create the shot, come here, go to drill my first hole, and I hit add hole. Um, the first thing I do is ask me to select my drill. So this be a list um, for, for each organization of drills that you have there. Um, hit my, uh, choose a drill, only have to do that on the first, uh, the first hole. Yeah, I think we lost your audio, uh, Brad. I, I can uh, I can go through here. Um, so I think I, I see your uh, uh, start drilling and finish drilling. There is a bit of a delay in the screen that you are you know moving in here. So what Brad kind of you know moving to the screen here is uh, you first select your site. That's the workflow he described. We created a project. You added your drills or you selected your existing drills. Uh, and then you create your shot uh, design in the app itself. So there are three options. One, directly, if you have a web app where you are uh, using drone models to create, so it automatically syncs and brings that map on all the whole locations here. And then you start drilling. The second option was just uh, creating a shot plan in the app itself where you have like a canvas box and where you uh, draw a crest and toe and you start drilling. Um, yeah, and then the third one was taking a picture of the bench and uploading it and then putting holes on top of that and then uh, doing it. So the three options. And now we are starting the drill. And then this is a finished drill. So as soon as you click finish drilling, you can then enter your uh, the total hole length. And uh, start and finish is the actual timestamp. So you don't have to worry about like you know what time it took because the time uh, we are automatically capture the phone timestamp uh, here, and then you can add a feature here. So this screen allows you to add uh, the features, which is you know at what length I felt uh, a specific cavity or kind of you know mud, uh, all things you can record all those, and then again uh, move on to the uh, hole number two. So this is hole number two. You're recording the entries again. And there are a few additional informations you can capture here um, along with the features is if you want to take a photo uh, after it's been drilled or you know during drilling you can add that you can uh, add a comment uh, so all these things that you are adding uh, is getting recorded automatically so as soon as you add a photo here it you know uh, goes and takes a photo uh, use this photo and uh, goes live in uh, so now we are done uh, with the uh, hole number, you know, two here, and this is the comment. So there you go. Uh, now, what it does is uh, essentially it records all, once you add the feature, it automatically saves all those features, which is, you know, if you have recorded for any other you know, drilling projects, it will save it and it will uh, give you an option to use those, reuse those features again and again. So you only have to, uh, you can create multiple features uh, for that. So I think Brad, I will ask you again here. Um, can't see the screen anymore. Uh, 
But I think we're almost at the uh, end. We, we didn't see the reporting part. That's kind of the main part uh, that is left. So once you're done uh, doing the drilling uh, here, recording all the data, uh, you have a one-click button, which is takes you to and uh, generates all the records. So now we are seeing all the features. So you can actually see in the interface uh, here where what's the start time, uh, what's the feature. Here we have cavity from kind of 12 meter to seven meter length here. Uh, similarly, you can add other types of features uh, for the entire whole length here or a specific part of the whole length. Um, so once it's done, you click update uh, and that takes you uh, to the next hole or if you want to add additional holes here. Now, if you go, um, yeah, so this, this is essentially, and me meanwhile, if you want to change your drill a lot of the time, if you have a large short plans or drill plans where you're using multiple drills, so you can assign different drills as well. Um, uh, that will kind of help you also, if you are trying to do this uh, utilization on the productivity analysis of drills that can be taken from there. Um, so I think the next workflow that Brad is showing here is uh, if you have a pen and paper design, so you essentially you take a picture and then upload in the app, uh, and then that will generate you kind of your whole locations. Uh, and this will, uh, uh, this will kind of give you, uh, it will record all the rows and the holes, uh, and then you can start drilling. So that's another way of uh, bringing your data, uh, the paper data to the life. Uh, so we, we looked at creating in the app um, and then uploading the picture um, of your uh, paper-based design. And then the third option was the uh, drone-based uh, design, which is anyways will be automatically synced uh, to from Istrio's web app to the uh, mobile app. Great. Um, so that now here we are again uh, looking at the test. Uh, adding all the information. This is the actual digital shot plan where you can actually draw the design uh, in the app here. So um, essentially clicking few points to draw a crest. It's kind of inverted, but it's all good. <laughs> Uh, so you just kind of click around, draw a crest, uh, and then uh, add some holes here that will uh, create your plan. There you go, and you can assign the rows as well, but just by clicking, uh, it will assign um, rows and hole numbers. And there you go. So you're done with this and then it will opens up all the uh, information in the map view as well and will ask you to uh, uh, go to the next section, which is uh, start drilling and selecting holes and rows and start drilling. So that was the digital shot plan option. I think there was a question came in. It would be great if it adds coordinates to uh, it does. Uh, if you have uh, the X, uh, X, Y information, uh, the actual coordinates, it, you can add that as well. But sometimes we're just, in this case, uh, it's just more of a canvas here. Uh, so just putting floating, it is in a floating space, um, but you can add uh, the coordinates as well. Yeah, so that, that was a digital short plan. Again, same workflow of adding the records here. I think we lost uh, the screen again. So we're almost at the end here uh, of uh, showing the workflows and how uh, the logging gets done. And then we're gonna quickly see the reports here. Hey guys, thanks for bearing with us. <laughs> I'm back, can you hear me now? Yeah. Okay. Nice. Nice. Yeah. So a bit of an overview of, <laughs> of the live thing. Um, yeah. The only thing that we missed is the report part. So the report part is essentially as you're logging, uh, it, um, 
you have an option in the account section to go and download the drill log report and send it over email or text it to someone. Uh, it instantly kind of, you know, generates a report for entire logging uh, and send it uh, uh, to everybody that you want yeah, from the uh, mobile itself. So that 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 was it. Yeah, that that was fun. You know, not gonna lie <laughs> <laughs> to, to make this work. Uh, uh, I appreciate everybody's patience here. Uh, well, we we have a few questions. I know we are in the top of the hour, uh, but uh, uh, let's just uh, address uh, one question here: Is is there certain metrics um, we track for uh, performance evaluation for operators? Yeah, so in terms of uh, the performance metrics you can track, um, uh, you could, for example, track uh, penetration rate. Uh, you can you could track um, kind of the the prevalence of things like uh, cavities, broken ground, things like that. Um, but then again, that may be just showing you what they uh, what they're reporting, and you may actually want them to report more. So you might not want to use that as a way to, to manage performance, but um, you'll definitely be able to see things like uh, start like uh, start time of the day and finish time of the day. So um, how how early they started. Um, so the to like the total um, you know effective shift time um, and the utilization uh, at that um, uh, of a particular operator, for example, while they were in it. In a drill. Great. Uh, there was one more uh, question here. Uh, essentially, have have we used this system with projects uh, using 1.4s type explosives like auto stem? I think that's more related to the loading side of the question there. Mm. Yeah, not not really yet. This is a uh, um yeah this is this is more on the drilling side um for now if you have any other detail on that question then um definitely send it through we can we can try and answer in a bit more in a bit more detail as well um otherwise yeah um uh, there was one more questions here, here more on the app itself uh, who is the drilling app available to uh, and is this available on android and ios so the app is available to everybody irrespective of uh, uh, whether you use Australia's, uh, uh current uh, you know web app photogrammetry along with kind of the uh, design softwares or not uh, this is independent and it's available in all the uh, versions or all kind of the cross device platforms, Android, iOS, uh, mobile and tablet as well. So it should have uh, the same experience. Yeah, for sure. And I guess, like we said, the um, because it can work, you know, completely from scratch, um, it can be used completely independently of any other of any other system, you know, a, an operator could just bring it straight to site, open up the app, create a blast, uh, create, a, create a shot plan, um, and just start drilling. Great. Well, unfortunately, we are, you know, uh, over time here, which uh, I appreciate everybody sticking around at the last uh, minute here. Uh, well, but we'll have to say goodbye. Uh, and uh, thank you for, you know, taking the time we will be taking a break from our monthly webinar series in December, you know, for the holidays, but uh, we like doing this. Uh, we, we like um, engaging with you all. I think a lot of uh, the audience has been, uh, there is a repeat attendance. So, you know, thanks for engaging. Uh, we always appreciate your feedback. So let us know how we do in this webinar, you know, uh, good or bad. We, we, we try to make it more informative as just possible uh, here. And uh, in the future, if you have any topics that you would like us to talk about or cover any specific challenges that you think that we should focus on uh, bringing that uh, topic you know, to the light, uh, uh, please let us know. Uh, if you would like to contribute as a speaker as well, you know, open invitation to the audience here as well. Uh, please let us know as well. We always like to collaborate. Uh, 
yeah, until then, uh, thank you very much for uh, being here. Uh, you guys have been a great audience. Uh, we'll see you next time. Thanks, guys. Thank you, Brad. Yeah, bye.